And good afternoon. How are we all today? I hope we're all looking good there. Seeing some messages coming in just as we we're about to go into the stream there. Uh, yes, so hello, Volodan. Hi, Zucker House. Good afternoon to the pair of you. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the Somerset so far. It is. I've absolutely loved every moment I've spent in it so far. Really think it's a fantastic expansion so far. And we're going to carry on today doing where I left off yesterday with some of the quests and everything else like that. Fall Downs just mentioned he's going to do some of the bosses and some of the, uh, the geysers today as well, so we wanted to know if I wanted to come and join him with that one as well. Sounds like a great plan, actually. We can go and check some of those out before we uh, crack on with some more questing for the day. Just before I do, though, I just wanted to say we're starting off where I left off, which is, if you remember last night when I left, I um, had just managed to acquire the, the new inn room in... Uh, uh, Eleanor in Somerset uh, which is available for free you just literally speak to the NPC outside and she gives you the free room it's basically a, a 30 items if you've got ESO plus or 15 furnishing items if you're a non ESO plus member area um, but it is absolutely awesome storming place uh, to have there a second and I last night when I went off stream I then went and furnished it so this is what I did with the place unfortunately 30 items even with ESO plus isn't a lot of things you can do with it but nonetheless, I decided I would still try and do something a little bit different. So I got an upstairs. I built an upstairs section. I got well, my fledgling griffin just over in the back there, um, sitting on the top of the wall. And this new stone wall is one of the new furnishing items that's actually available in the game from the home furnisher. There's no achievement needed for that one. You can just buy that straight from the home furnisher in Alanor. Um, you've got the planks that I've put up here. And then you've got this stairwell as well. And these steps are also available from the home furnisher as well not very expensive either so i can see a lot of use and a lot of people want to use these for homes and they just come down to my downstairs section you see it's all changed a bit since i first got it yesterday it was all empty so i got a little plaque up on the wall a little chest to store some goodies in and some a wine rack for myself as well high elf wine rack and just a little table there for people to sit in my salamander pet as well which i got from the collector's edition just sat down here in the corner looking up at us so yeah that i just wanted to quickly show that off as i started the stream today and one of the other things i realized i hadn't done yesterday is that i hadn't also um let's just drop out of the group with ferocious kit in a second because i know we were in group with her but i'll just drop out of that one there because so, i would be running around again and might join up with all down in a second to have a run around with some of the geysers and bosses um but yes uh, one of the things i didn't do yesterday that i should have done uh in, not in the champion points because i've spent my champion points now i put those all in i did that off stream as well yesterday is that we also have because i got the collector's edition the sigic crown crate hey thanks sucker house glad you like it um let's say there's not a lot you can do with 30 items um and i have to use the entire allocation in that room there and if you want to do something like i mean it's tall enough room it's probably the only in room that's really sufficiently tall enough to be able to actually build a second floor into it if you wanted to you can build your own second floor in there the problem is with 30 furnishing items you can't really do an awful lot with that which is a bit of a shame but still nonetheless we managed to get something done with it as well which makes it a little bit unique and it's just that little home away from home in Alanor for me um but i have the sigic crown crate um that came with the collector's edition so i normally don't do great with this i've had one or two drops out here never had a mount drop i don't think i know i think i've had one mount drop come through um i've had uh, or two sweet rolls drop before which is always nice if you get sweet rolls you can exchange them in for 400 crowns and that's more than enough for the sweet rolls to purchase amount of your choice if you wanted to um, but other than that I mean I have had quite a few crates over the last year and uh, my luck isn't great so I'm not expecting a lot from this it'll probably be some memento or a costume or something like that but let's have a look let's see how my luck holds up today and we'll open up my Sigic crown crate so what have we got? We've got two blues, so it's not going to be anything fantastic on there. But let's have a look. Well, we've got Trice po Restoration Potion. We have the Tincture. We have... Oh, we have Lashes. Okay, fair enough. And we have a Regal Eagle Winged Body Tattoos. Wasn't expecting much. My luck wasn't always going to be holding up there. But still, I mean, you know, those Lashes might become in handy at some point. But cool. Excellent, that's alright. You still can't knock it. It's free stuff at the end of the day. Um, so, I mean, with these sort of things, you know, if you get the Crown Crate anyway with the Collector's Edition, might as well open it up. The same whenever they do the Crown Crate drops, when they say, yep, yeah, you log in with your ESO Plus and you get Crown Crates. It's awesome. Um, oh, Zucker House says it's better than his. So, <laughs> what did you manage to get with yours then? Was it just absolutely nothing then? Was it all just potions and experience scrolls and things like that? 
Um, but yes, anyway, so that was my Sigic Crown crate. So there we are. I didn't get fantastic on stream. So, and the other thing I wanted to quickly demonstrate as well while we're here in Eleanor um, was go and have a look at, if you haven't seen them yet, is that the furnishing items here are absolutely lovely. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, oh, that's a shame, Zucker House. That really is. Uh, you only just got potions and food there. Um, yeah, I wish there was some of the rewards were a little bit better on there. That's uh, just on a more regular basis, maybe. Uh, but still, you know, at the end of the day, as I say, if you're getting it for free anyway, then it's, you know, it's a bonus rather than something that you should be expecting. Um, our Ferocious Kit says she had a new dog to add to her canine collection. Awesome. So she, I already know that she's got loads of dogs there already, so that's just another one to add to her collection. But anyway, yes, yeah, so let's run through Eleanor a second. It's just such a beautiful city down here. Um, we're going to find the furnishers because I wanted to just show you guys, if you haven't seen them already, that the furnishing items for your houses in Somerset, uh, what they've added is actually really lovely, some of the stuff. So if we come around, am I nearly there? Yes, it's down here, right. Uh, and in fact, actually I just rode into her, running around her, let's actually talk to her. So this is the standard furniture. Uh, so you can purchase anything in a store without uh, needing any achievements or anything else. The prices aren't too bad, you know, about 100 gold, 250 gold each and everything else. Some of the stuff she has, block of wood cutting and everything else, you'll find in many other vendors throughout Tamriel, you know, rough clothes line and stuff as you're going down. But there are a bunch of other stuff that is actually unique to her as well. So we got some Somerset style bushes there as well. You got some uh, coral shelving there as well. And a larger one there as well, which might go well if you've got some a house with a beach or something there. There's some he new hedges as well, sort of overgrown hedges to use if you wanted to. It adds to the already. There's already quite a few good hedges in there, but it just adds to them there. We got some limestone borders that you can use to line the sides of your gardens as well. And then you've got these things. So you've seen I use one of the street, one of this, the next one here as the, a part of the top floor in the house that you just saw there, but it's these new stone walls. So that I'm sure there are plenty of uses people could think of that, for that. There's a curved one, there's a long straight one and a short straight one as well. And then you've got also a bit of limestone there, there's rock, uh, more rock. Then there's those steps I was talking about. It's literally only 100 gold for the steps. So how handy is that? And it sort of gives you these five steps and you can obviously stack them on top of each other as well to give you even bigger stairwells. I think it's fantastic that we got actually they've put these sort of style steps in there as well because I changed it in the guild house because the guild house I'd use several like those old structural blocks to create the steps up to the stage that took about six blocks now I've replaced it with this because one of these on its own is more than enough in fact the rough block that you see on the next one down um, and then they got the bunch of these lovely trees as well so if you've got any gardens you want doing out have a look at some of the trees you've got in here. Some of them are really nice actually to add into there. Uh, so that's the saplings there as well. But if you come down here, there's some even bigger trees. So you look at the size of this tree is absolutely massive. You can tell by the gridding on the bottom there. Um, and there's a few other larger trees as well. That would really go well if you wanted to really do a Somerset style garden as well in your houses. And it's just absolutely beautiful there more there young tree there and everything else and this is just the normal furniture that's not the achievement furniture so you don't need any achievements for that you just literally need that itself um right just bear with me a second i've got a bunch of notifications coming in so let's have a quick look what we got oh it's because of my collections that i just updated let's get rid of those right okay so if we pop down here of course you've got your normal global achievement furniture and your holiday achievement furniture as well which turns up in a number of the cities anyway um you'll get these in morrowind and in your capital cities of the uh, the main alliances as well so the things they've got will be all generally the same and uh, yes yeah, sucker has those trees are absolutely gorgeous i mean i can i want somewhere with a nice garden that can put those into i'm thinking of maybe replacing some of the trees in the guild house because some of those trees would look great there so i may have a consider of that so you may find the guild house trees are going to change slightly over the next couple of days i'll see how i feel with that one and just give them a test out and see what they're like um right okay so we've got uh, tamin uh who is the achievement furnisher here and these are furnishings that as you gain your achievements through uh somerset uh, then become available for your furnishings as well. The various different prices on them, but you need to get the achievements to get them as well. But once you've unlocked them, you'll be able to add these to the house. So you've got the Abyssal Pearl that we've seen and been destroying as we've been going around playing the game itself in Somerset at the moment. We've got this lovely statue of the Kin Lady. 
and then there is a wine press yay so you actually got a wine press now as well as the beer kegs that you can also get in the game already um so i, I could see plenty of good uses for that one in some of my houses uh then we've got the banner of the house of reveries which is obviously the uh place where all the acting troops are for the high elves uh they've got the banner of the sappy arcs which is that one then we've got the cloud rest banner with the griffin on it that you can hang off the wall there then we've got a coral formation, which is luminescent, so I'm guessing that is lights up as well. Yeah, it produces a light pattern as well across it. Uh, then we've got this strange crystal here. Apparently it's from the Crystal Tower. I'm guessing that is a quest that we will encounter somewhere on the lines. I haven't quite reached that quest yet, but I imagine it's related to that. And it actually has its own stand as well, which actually this stand could probably be used for a number of things, not just for that. Uh, I could imagine you putting some of these trophies into the center of this. It's actually quite a nice looking stand. You could do some, someone who's got a bit of imagination where they could probably do a few things in that with their housing. Uh, then we've got the uh, Derenai banner here as well. That's cool. Then we got this lovely display case. Apparently a few display cases have been added to the game already. I haven't gone through the furnishing items to see what the new crown store furnishing items are um, or the new patterns that might have been added. But um, this one is available uh, upon getting the appropriate achievement. So it's Mind Games Achievement. I haven't worked out what that one is yet. I haven't actually gone through and worked out what these achievements are yet. But this will be, uh, you could get this as well. So if you wanted like a museum piece and display things in your house itself, then some of these display cases would be awesome. Reminds me a bit of Skyrim where you had, uh, when the um, expansion came out for your own housing and stuff, and you could get your display cases for those houses and put arrange stuff in it. It's the same sort of thing uh, there. Which you can now use these for your house. Uh, an enchanted text illusionary forest, which is quite intriguing. I don't know if you could, if the text itself, because you notice there's a little book down in the middle of the tree area there itself, but um, I don't know whether it's a case of you read the book and then the forest grows, or whether it's just like that, it's just static like that. We'd have to get it to find out. Um, the Evergloom uh, Wisp Stone. Now these already exist in the game but not as a furnishing item these were all in the clockwork city with some of the expansions that uh, some of the uh, delves down there uh you'd encounter the, these on the pathway through um there's the evergloom uh delve that's on the left hand side of clockwork city there are quite a few of those scattered around usually ghosts would spawn around these um but yeah they've now added it as a furnishing item into the game uh then it's a lilandril banner which is that one there uh, I do have a house which has a load of banners in, so I'm going to be running out of space. Well, I think I've nearly run out of space anyway for banners at the moment, so I'm going to have to try and find space for all of those. Then we've got Mine Trap Kelt. Kelp? Not Kelt. Kelp. Uh, hey, Sagil, how you doing? How's things? Are you looking after yourself? Uh, ah, so it's finally here. So it took all, it's taken this time to actually download. Ah, oh, oh, shame to hear that it takes so long for you as well. I know you were mentioning yesterday about how long it takes to... Uh, get the download through yesterday um, I hope you get to enjoy it today though uh, now that you're actually able to get in there and you get to have fun there um, I'm doing very well thank you Sajo thanks for asking uh, but yes uh, I'm just going through showcasing quickly before I run around continue doing some quests uh, some of um, the furnishing items that have been added into here just in between there as I just left my new in-house um, and they say these are the achievement ones that are coming up uh, in the actual game itself uh, well, not coming up, but actually already in the game. You just got to get the achievements and then pay the cost to get them. Um, we got this one here, the Sigic uh, Control Globe, uh, which looks awesome. I think it's like, you know, just like this bubble of water or bubbles of water all spinning around on this thing. I think that's quite a nice little mystical item. Uh, then we got the replica of Transparent Law. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. Some kind of crystal entity thing i think but yeah quite cool though still nonetheless i mean anything like this uh the shimmering banner uh so the banner of uh, the other town just across on the west side of uh somerset island on oh, the east side sure i should say uh and then a bunch of coral stuff as well that we can get there uh you got the sunhole banner there which i think is the city i haven't been to it yet but that's in the south uh and then we got the keeper's oaf which is this pla stone plaque thing here which is quite cool and then this last one i absolutely think is adorable i could see so many people doing fantastic things with it and it's this it's this waterfall they've actually put a waterfall furnishing item into the game uh, so you imagine this is a water feature you could do a number of things have this going into fountains off the side of things might take a little bit of work to you uh to get it looking great but 
hey, that just looks, I think that looks fantastic. I could think of a few things that I might be able to do with that already. Um, doing sort of fountain style things. I, it's just, I can see myself spending a fortune on just those, I hit that item alone and having several of those pouring into a fountain or something, I'd imagine. So Sajid was saying, yeah, something was up with the download. I actually had to leave my PC on when I left for work to let it download. Oh, yeah. I'm not a fan of leaving my PC on when I go out. Uh, I know Kitten isn't either because you're not there to look after it and keep an eye on it and see if anything goes wrong with it. Um, sometimes with big downloads, it's an idea because the downloads take forever. I mean, it was a 10 gigabyte download yesterday for us all. Uh, which then obviously it's got to apply and everything else. And if your broadband's not running at its best speed or not running as the speed it should be, like ours wasn't either, um, then uh, yeah, it can take a while. Um, I know Ninja, uh, is Ninja619 his name is, he, um, when I watched his stream last night, uh, he was saying it took him, um, he had to do free repairs on the game itself. Um, before he could actually get into it and he was having problems all across and even when he got to the stream it still wasn't perfect he was still getting a lot of drop in frames and everything else like that something had gone wrong there and i don't think it helped either this week as some people know that windows 10 or not this week last week windows 10 did a big update as well which seems to have mucked up a load of people's settings as well it's caused me a couple of problems and a few other people problems as well so i mean it's a, a bit of a shame but we are still cracking on with that anyway and it's all now up and running most people are getting there and hopefully Sajal, now that yours is up and running you'll be back in there as well well, uh, yes, Agile, yeah, he was saying he had to, he, he downloaded it all, it didn't work, he had to do about three uh, repairs, he had to uninstall drivers, reinstall his drivers and everything else like that. By the time he got to the stream, he, he was intending from his time frame to be in, on, in at 2 o'clock, he didn't get in until about 8 o'clock uh, to do in the stream, and by the time he was on there, he was just like pulling his hair out, apparently his Animax had been in contact with him as well trying to solve the problems as i had a, a bunch of other people and he was close to like ah by the time he got into somerset which sort of curbed his enthusiasm a little bit for somerset itself but i think he got in he got in, himself back into it once he was on stream and loads of people were there interacting with him on stream and uh, running around and having a time good time with it as well so um but yeah it sounded like he had a nightmare <laughs> of a day with it unfortunately um right okay so yeah that's the furnishing items there um, right, okay. I'm just going to drop uh, Voladan a quick message, just check if he's online, just to see if he did want to go and do some of these things straight off the first bat a second. Uh, if not, we'll go off and do some questing until he's ready. Uh, so I'll just whisper him, uh, did you want to do the, uh, do the geysers, stroke bosses straight away? Uh, cool, we'll see what he says. Uh, awesome. Uh, right, okay, drop out in a second. And yes, there's a bunch of quests now. Ah, he can do it now. So, okay, cool. Um, let's invite him to group. Cool. And then he can lead the way to where we're going. So, where is he at the moment? Let's have a quick look. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, he might not even be in Somerset at the moment. Uh, oh no, he's over in uh, Shimmerine at the moment. Uh, he's got all the stuff on the map. I said, okay, so, okay, we will follow you. Uh, uh, hey. No, that's cool. I'll follow you and stream at the same time. Awesome. Sorry, Volodan, as we all know, does uh, some a bunch of the raids and stuff. Uh, not the raids, raids is World of Warcraft trials. Uh, he leads trials and dungeon stuff and everything else. Many of us are signed up to him and everything else. He's got another one on next Sunday for those of you who are interested. Um, many of the spots have already gone now. There's a few left though, so go and have a look uh, if you want to go doing the trial. It'll be on this Sunday coming. Um, where are we off to? Hellrar, I think it is this time. I'm going to see that one. Uh, oh, there's a new way shrine that we've just discovered. I will just come and jump to him. Hopefully, we won't miss each other because he was just at the same way shrine. So, where are we? There he is. Should be off to the side there. Cool. There's Valadan running around in circles. Awesome. Cool. That's a really nice mount. I love that mount. Where did he get that from? Is that from the Sigit crates that he's managed to get that? As he had all the luck and managed to get himself an amazing mount. It's like some sort of golden... Yeah, he's racing off. This is only a brand new character, so... Uh, okay, cool. 
He's got to remember I'm not as fast. <laughs> awesome. Um, that mount is awesome. I like that. If he gives us a chance in a bit, I'll have a better look at that one. That's really cool. Uh, so, right, racing off down here. Uh, where is he taking us? Oh, he's taking us to the first boss. This is the one which he actually did yesterday, but I think he needs to do it as well. If you didn't see this one, this will be the deer boss. Um, or the uh, stag boss and everything else like that. The fight yesterday against this was mental. Um, yeah, there he is. That's the boss. So, let's summon up. Uh, yep, yeah, that's cool. Uh, he's just asking if he's ready. That's cool. Sajal's just letting us. Yep, yeah, there's three spots left on the trial, and that's it for this Sunday. So let's uh, jump in and see what we can do. Where's he gone? Ah, oh, there he is. Over there. Now, as I am not playing my tank, I'm not screaming, look at me, as I normally do. Well, you'll take this one out. Now, there's a moment this one goes into a really mental phase and starts sending out loads of ghostly deers at you. That's the animal deer, not beloved type deer. <laughs> no, no, don't hit me. Oh, go back. Yes, cool. Where's he gone? Over there. And now we got the mob spawning. Ah, uh, yeah, when we did this yesterday, we had a lot more of us, and there were a lot more mobs spawning when we were coming in and attacking it. So I think it scales a bit how many mobs end up attacking you, depending on how many of you are there doing it. I mean, there was a lot more of us here, and it actually felt harder to complete than it is now. So I think these bosses are actually having a bit of a scale around. But there we are. That's the first boss down. Cool. That's done. And they say he has a add-on at the moment that's showing him where all these bosses and the geysers are. So we shall follow him around and find out where we need to be. Just needs to remember he's probably up on full speed and I'm only on half speed. Uh, not on the full speed. This is a brand new character. But I only started yesterday, so she's only level 9. Um, but, you know, I'm quite enjoying her so far. She's quite a good character. Um... My little wood elf with her new bear as well, which I have yet to name my bear. So if anyone's got any ideas for the name for my new pet bear, uh, I know if I do, Eliza named hers uh, Fluffy. Um, something sensible one would wish. Oh, he's got the sky shard there. Cool. I've got this one already. I already got that one yesterday, so that's cool. Yeah, and just dive over the edge there. Cool. Right, no problems. So we're still alive. It'll do. Uh, right, so where is he taking us to now? Uh, down this way. I've got a quest in there. Oh, yeah, that'll be the uh, back to the Sigic Order. And I think yesterday I mucked up the questing a little bit. There we are. Okay, cool. Now keep following. Jute. Also need to keep an eye out for these new jewellery stuff as well. The jewellery seems to be able to craft the jewellery itself. I was watching yesterday, if some of you haven't seen it yet, uh, or I was watching this morning actually, sorry, Inkling's video about how to power level jewellery crafting. He's got an intriguing method for doing it. He can basically get from 1 to 50 in jewellery crafting in under an hour. <laughs> it's just mental. It does require, though, you having done already quite a bit of PvP or being prepared to buy AP points from someone who does a lot of PvP. Uh, but yeah, there is a way to get your jewelry crafting up to its max level within an hour, which is mental way of thinking about it. Oh, I think we've hit the next boss. A what is he? He's a graveled. So he's some form of giant salamander by the looks of it. I don't think this one's going to last very long. We dived in when the fight was already there. Oh, that's like a big firestorm erupting out there. We don't want to be caught in that fire. No, don't run into the fire, me. It's bring up a field of mushrooms to heal off. Oh, and it's, it's dead. No, it's just despawned and summoned a bunch of ads. Okay, right, no problems. Let's bring up. Let's try and get as many of these out with AoE as possible. And I'm getting that blue effect on my screen again. Anyone worked out what this blue effect is around the border of the screen? Where that comes from? But I haven't seen it before we started doing Somerset, and I didn't notice it yesterday until later on when I was teaming up with uh, Q 
kitten in regards to it. And then it's like, I'm through the kitten said she was getting it all day. There we are, I've got the blue effect again. I'm not sure why that's coming up on the screen. Oh, here we go, more flames. I thought we were, he was not far from death, but then we seem to, he's brought up a load of ads and it's given him more life than was originally expected. Ah, there we are. We are now level 10. So, okay, let's quickly claim that and pump some points into stamina. Cool. Excellent. Uh, right, okay, and I've got six points to spend, which I will sort out in a moment. Let's carry on and help him out, and then we can go and spend our points. Six points, actually. How did I get six skill points already? That's, wow. Okay, so, cool. Uh, following him, so that's the second one. I'm now a Cyrodiil recruit. And an amphibian agitator. <laughs> okay, no problems. I agitate amphibians. Uh, there's Ace. Wish right ahead. Is he alright? Uh, do you just want to do Sunhold on our way there? Public dungeon. Uh, oh, yes, please. That's cool. If we've got two of them there. And if anyone else wants to join us for the public dungeon, I mean, I'm sure we can add one or two more people into the group as well. We could run around and do that one. Uh, I'm going to hit a geyser first, though. So, yeah, I think there's one down this way from what I've seen on the maps. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're down by Silverwode. So, okay. Run in behind here. I really miss having full speed. I really miss having the full speed perks on this. Most of my other characters are already on 60 plus speed for their mounts. Obviously, as it's a brand new character yesterday, she has one point invested into her mount speed. Uh, I don't know if I can top her up yet. No, either. No, she, it's not even available to top up just yet. Uh, okay, so... Oh, we've discovered the geyser. Where is it? Ah, oh, straight ahead. There we are. Okay. So if you've not seen these geysers yet, they are basically Somerset's equivalent of a um, dolmen. Uh, where you get waves and waves of enemies attacking you and then it ends with a final boss and then you got a load of loot at the end. Um, yes, yeah, so he's asking should we wait. Uh, happy to wait. That's cool. It gives me a chance to have a quick chat with people. So it looks like someone casted a spell on me. Uh, what, with the blue edging and everything else? I think it's a spell that's coming out in Somerset. Maybe. Uh, it's a Sigic skill. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I haven't picked up the Sigic skill line myself yet. So maybe, yeah, it's maybe a shareable Sigic skill or something that's doing it. Um, they say Kitten said she was getting it a few times yesterday. I had it yesterday, uh, today. Well, last thing last night, I was seeing it crop up. And today, it's um, also just seen it coming in there as well. So I'm just wondering where it's come from because I've never seen that kind of effect coming up before. Um, so we're finding out what causes it and why it happens. Uh, hopefully. This won't take too long to spawn. We will then be doing Sunhold, as he said. He asked if we want to do Sunhold. That's this area. It's a public dungeon. It's basically one of the other cities in Somerset uh, that's been essentially taken over by the Maramar, which is the Sea Elves. Um, but we'll find out more about that storyline when we get to it in a second. Hopefully this geyser won't take too long to spawn. Playing on the EU server at this time of day as well is quite good. It's nice and quiet. There's not too many people running around as yet. More people tend to flood in in the next couple of hours as people finish work and college and everything and jump onto the servers. So it's a good time to get in, just have a bit of a play around and everything else there as well. Um, as I said, we're going to hit Sunhold in a minute once this geyser spawns. If it spawns, hopefully it won't take too long. It's the same as waiting for dolmens that you can be sat there for a few moments. Um, while we're at it, uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, oh, have I lost my bear? I have lost my bear, so let's bring my bear back. Uh, okay, we're going to pop off. Uh, there's a point of interest just around the corner, so we're going to have a quick look there. So I'll follow Geyser, uh, Geyser uh, Volodan uh, over there after him. Uh, if he remembers the fact that this is a brand new character, I only started it yesterday, so I can't ride as fast as he does. Uh, there we are, up we go, up the hill. I mean, this land. It's just absolutely stunning scenery all the way throughout. Oh, yep, there he is. And we've got one of those pagodas over there. Now, there's something similar to that that I got uh, from... Ah, oh, there's a quest giver here. Right, let's have a quick look. What'd she say? You walk in here and three skivers arguing over a dead body and decide you want to chat with one of them? You either got some kind of guts or you're some kind of stupid. Either way, 
Maybe you can help. Well, what happened here? A family squabble of sorts. You see, one of these ghosties went and killed Vareda. Problem is, none of us are about to go treasure hunting with a murderer at our back. And killing for gold, you don't stop one. So I hear. You mentioned treasure. An ancestor of ours, Javier the Keelholer, cashed the loot around here. If you grab the chest for us, there's no chance for a sneak attack. The map over there will lead you right to it. And obviously, I'll pay you for the trouble. I'll collect the treasure chest for now, you. I know what you're probably thinking. Look at these squabbling fools. Why don't I just take the treasure myself? Tough like that. The only thing that will crack the chest open is the blood of Jadil's descendant. Thus, you'll need one of us. Tell me more about yourself. I'm known as Igeki Rathbite. It would serve you well to not forget that name, given that I one day have a legacy as epic as Jadil herself. Why, uh, why are you called the Igek Ratbite? You saw my face, right? I got bit by a rat. A rat did that? It was a big rat. <laughs> Must be a very big rat. Hey, Dr. Cool, how's things? Uh, all right, then, tell me about the Gajel, the keel hauler. She was an explorer. <laughs> Kitten saying, yeah, now I know what it's like when she's running after me, which is quite true. Despite half her crew falling mad along the way, she discovered new lands, new cultures. Shame so few hear of her. Her greatest adventure was raiding the palace of King Orgnum himself. Yeah, that's the usual story with me and Kitten, is that when I'm chasing after Kitten, it's Kitten, I'm usually pelting along at a million miles an hour and way ahead in the distance after Kitten, and Kitten's lagging behind because she's never able to get her mounts up as far as I have. Uh, so, is that how she got the treasure? Right you are. Fled Fiandania after quick as a flash. Pa said the whole Meromor fleet came after her. Eventually, they chased her right to this cove. She fled to the shore, clutching a single chest of treasure, buried it before making her way back home. And she enchanted it so that only her descendants can open it? The blood of my blood willingly given. That's how the enchantment goes. You see, Jadil wanted to settle down, have a few brats of her own. So the story was passed along. They were descendant adventurous enough to set sail. Right, also oh, cool. So where are we now? So we're not gonna go straight on to this quest. Where's Voladan gone? Uh yeah, so let's I'll carry on. Um so let's say we're not doing the quest. Uh just picking it up. Cool, that's right. So I've got the quest, I can come back and grab the rest of that and continue doing it there. Uh but I will just follow on after him. We'll go and get to the point of interest that he was talking about. Oh, right, okay, just need to find the thing. Well, in that case, I'd better go and click on the other bit then if it's just a really quick quest, he's saying. It's not like one of the bigger quest lines in here. So we've got his tr the treasure map. There we are, we got it. Use the treasure map. Okay. And apparently he knows where the actual treasure is. So if we head down here. Apparently I'm driving kitten potty reading it out like all the other Twitch streamers. <laughs> okay, my responses. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, what would you prefer? Would you prefer me to read it out? Or would you uh, just prefer if I just click the answers there? It's up to you guys, all of you. Um, let us know what you think in the uh, in the chat there. Should I read responses out? Or should I just leave and play through and you guys can see what I'm clicking on there? Uh, oh, and he's found it apparently. So okay, so he's just straight ahead. Uh, I could probably ride through this. Actually, it's shallow enough. Uh, cool. Dive over there. Yeah, it's not far. There. Oh, where's he gone then? Somewhere in this region, I think. Well, come to the map. He is. Uh, straight ahead still. Ah, yeah. Okay. So there's a point of interest here. So let's just keep. Uh, and he says he's found where the treasure is. So. This looks like roughly what the map was saying. Ah, uh, yes, there we are. There's the dirt mound. Let's dig that up. Okay, then. I won't read them out anymore, then. It's just that everyone else seems to do that. They read out the responses as they give them. But that's fine. We can do it without the, having to actually click the responses and read them out at all. Um, okay, so right, where is he? There, there we are. Got it. Uh, and then what we do, we're just taking it back, is it? Yeah, we just seem to be taking it back over there. Okay, and diving off the side of a cliff. My health isn't that high. <laughs> we are great. I am feeling very much like Kitten at the moment, chasing after someone who is faster than me and hasn't got the health to keep diving over the cliff. Oh, there's a sky shard uh, over the back here. Let's go and grab that. I'll just let him know there's a sky shard. So there's one here. Let's grab that one.
Awesome. Excellent. That was well spotted. I haven't actually looked at the locations where all the sky shards are in this game at the moment. So I'm just going to find the ones that I find as I go around and then probably once I've done all of um, Somerset with this character, I will go back and have a look at a map and see which ones I missed and go back and grab them. Okay, so we come around here. And it should be just up here. Hopefully by the time we've done this, the geyser should have been close to respawning. Jadir's treasure? Huh. I always imagined it a tad bigger. Well, if it's stuffed with diamonds, I guess it doesn't much matter what size the box is. Thanks for grabbing it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to crack this beauty open. Ah, of course, it's a straightforward now, quest. Let's cool. See what we're right, here. and then let's go to the geyser then. Okay. So, thank you. Let's head off to the geyser, which hopefully by this point now will be close to respawning and be available for attacking, if not already up and active, though I can't see the purple beam in the sky, which is the indication of the geysers in the same way that dolmens have like, oh, hang on, I speak too soon. There's a purple beam over there. It is up, apparently. Okay, so let's jump down. There we go. Yeah, and it's about to start. There we are, so we are about to have be overwhelmed with massive mobs, swarms of mobs coming at us and attacking us out of there. So, take these out. Cool. He says, and this thing. This will also scale as well, depending on how many people are here to fight it, as to how much comes out and attacks you. So, if there's loads of you here, you will have loads of mobs. If there's only a couple of you here, then you won't have many to take on at all. You know, and I'm pretty sure if you, you know what you're doing, you could probably solo these the same as you can with the dolmens. Take out those. I love the fact we got new enemies as well. It's good that they added some new stuff, these snail like creatures, the Yagra. For us to take out. It's a brand new Warden character. I've still got actually one more space on my bar for another ability, so I better put something in later, especially as we've now hit level 10. One thing I do like about this is that you can collect loot from the NPCs that die in this point. You couldn't do that with Dolmens, but you can do that with these geysers. So it's one of the differences between it, is that when you kill them, you can loot their bodies. With the uh, dolmens, of course, you can only loot uh, either the cultists at the beginning when you kill them, or the final boss. There isn't, and the creatures that spawn with the final boss. Any of the uh, the mobs that you kill on the way, they don't drop loot at all. But here in the geysers, they seem to actually drop the loot. So you're not killing them for nothing other than just experience. Uh, yeah, I'll ha uh, keep saying that she's got the new map up for the Sky Shards and stuff as well. Uh, it's already uh, up on Fextra Life, uh, which is one of the uh, websites that deals with... Um I summon Turag oh. of the Abyss to blind you with her light. Okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 Fextra Life is one of the sites that does uh, some of the tips and hints and guides to... Um, ESO, so it's quite useful for some information, things like sky shards and everything else. Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, as I said, I want to just run around, see what I find on the way. There we are, there's that blue edging again. It's really odd. Let's get out of the red area that I was knocked down in. Oh, I nearly did. So let's use some mushrooms. I need more mushrooms. Yeah, that's not a dodgy spell ability to have. Right, okay. We get better by eating mushrooms in this game, apparently. A bit like Mario, who gets more powered up. Okay, so... A few treasure chests, and then at the end of when you complete it, when you complete the kill, the final bad guy like we just did there, you have a little trove here, a little treasure chest. So, we'll get that one open. There we are. So there's some more jewellery there as well. That's great, because that's what we need more of. So as I am now currently leveling up my jewellery crafting on my crafting character, the more rings we can get. Just remember that any rings and jewellery that you had before Somerset, you can't dismantle. 
it's only things that you've got since Somerset was released uh, that you can dismantle and you've got to obviously have Somerset before you can do jewelry crafting let's uh, take this one out before we finish taking out that seam there we are cool excellent I still got to ask Volodan actually about that mount he's got there because that is I haven't seen that in the game before so I imagine that's he's managed to have a very lucky drop on the uh, the Sigic crates there it's absolutely beautiful unless anyone else knows any different where else it might have come from but that's an awesome mount okay so chasing off afterwards and, down. and I've been caught by a thing oh see I have no stamina on my mount so if something hits me it's going to knock me off the mount as well nothing that's uh, going to hold it back why are we going to let me mount am I still count as being in a fight I'm not because my bear is with me my bear would have run off to fight as well but it's not letting me mount up for some reason is it because I got you cannot mount right now that's odd can't mount for some reason ah now I can Okay, must have counted me as still being in a fight somewhere. Uh, must have been, yeah, must have been something that was triggered there that was uh, still holding us back a little bit. But that's okay, it's dropped out, cool. Let's carry on up. Uh, where are we heading to next? I don't know if it's boss, is it a geyser? He's got the guide, he's showing us where we're going, we're going to grab those. So we'll try and grab all the bosses and the geysers uh, at the moment, and then uh, after we've done that, we'll go and do all the questing as well. I uh, already done a bunch of the start and the quest yesterday, so those videos are up on YouTube now as well. I do save everything off to YouTube for later use. Um, I will be making some cut down excerpts and highlight videos based on the stuff that I've been doing. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, I only started Twitch streaming in the last week. So I started last Saturday. Uh, not the Saturday just gone, but the Saturday before. It was the first time I started doing that uh, Twitch streaming for this. Uh, what have we got? Uh, we have, uh, well, we have a deer. That's not a boss. So where are we then? So why is he brought us here? Uh, while he's doing that, second, let's just quickly level up. Gain some points. There we go. We need to put some things, and he's run off already. Okay, where is he? Uh, oh no, he's not. He's over there. He's at the back. Ah, oh, he's getting a chest. Okay. No worries. Does anyone know if there's any of these ultra rare drops coming in these chests this uh, for this chapter? Hopefully there isn't anything as annoying as the buoyant armor just set that was dropping from the chests in uh, what do you call it uh, in Morrowind? Um, I mean, great motifs and everything else, but the drop chance on those buoyant armor motifs was so low it was painstaking for those who were hunting for it. Uh, I never did in the end, but uh, oh. <laughs> no idea, but let me uh, pick up this quest. If you come to bask in the splendor of my latest outdoor arrangement, you're too late. They're ruined. Cast into unsightly disarray by a barbaric vandal. Just go home and spare yourself the disappointment. My garden, my art, has been violated, desecrated by some vulgar wood elf. Yeah, my character's a wood elf. Stop slang. Right Stop dissing the wood elf. Now he's threatening my life. Can you believe it? Not just a garden, the very art of gardening. Eslian is waging a war on Altma horticulture. I represent everything he despises, so he's targeting my work. He's gone too far this time. Planting stranglers to ward me away. They could kill someone. Stranglers are a stubborn breed. Hacking them up would only be temporary. Okay, Sanjal, have a good day. Take care. Proof that the wood elf is responsible, so he can't do any more damage. Perhaps Eslian left something at my gardens that could be incriminating. Weeks ago, Eslian came here to convince me that wilderness should be allowed to grow unchecked and untamed, as in green shade. Obviously, I found his argument lacking. It wasn't long after that the tampering began. Of course, but they are of little help. Can't spare time for criminal mischief. It seems sullying our pristine lands doesn't count among the worst things all these Nebera are up to. It's obvious who the culprit is. 
but I lack proof, so he runs. A gang with the dissing of the wood elves and the outsiders. The wood elves' tampering is sloppy, careless, maybe even thoughtless. I'm sure he's left traces of his work. A discarded trowel, foreign seeds, his own dung, or whatever a wood elf uses to fertilize soil. Would it be trivial if not for the stranglers? I am the foremost authority of the Altma Botanical Arts. My vision has literally shaped the lay of the land from Alinor to Sunhold, and my best arrangements grace the royal palace. If you take issue with our methods, you take issue with me. Occasionally, there are always up-and-comers looking to stir up controversy or make their mark, but no one who desired any respect in the field would stoop to sabotage or assault. He called our wilderness sterile and artificial. Nature is unruly and chaotic, but he's rather missing the point. Orderly cultivated gardens are a refinement of the raw. A plant lacks the intelligence to reach its true potential. It must be guided. Those monstrosities aren't native to any isle of Somerset, and they couldn't have crossed the seas naturally. Even if they could, the stranglers would be more widespread. They were brought here and planted deliberately among my arrangements. Uh, okay, cool, excellent. So, right, done. So we'll come back to that quest as well at some point this week. And it's just picking up the quests as we're running around here, so we've got a bunch of quests as well to do. Uh, cool, and then we're going to find more of these guys. As, but yeah, someone who's got problems with their gardening. Very high elf style quest. I love. They've really thought about what high elf culture is like and the things that might concern them, uh, and how they think about all these sort of things. Um, and like the rest of the world would sort of think of it like you're just looking at it in a really sort of flippant way, I suppose. And. You seem to be sort of missing the point as the high elves and the high elves are like, no, you're not getting the point that we've got. And it's just the differences between their cultures. It's quite cool. Uh, right, grab that way shrine there. Uh, ah, I guess we're heading towards another geyser just over this way. Uh, Kitten was saying she, she likes the way that um, the style of play, the conversations changed. She was mentioned yesterday when we were on stream that there, she came across one where they recognized that she was a member of the Dark Brotherhood when she came up to help him, which is absolutely awesome. They recognise things like that, though how she was recognised as being a member of the Dark Brotherhood, that's a bit worrying because you're not supposed to be known to be a member of the Dark Brotherhood, but uh, yeah, very cool that they actually brought it up. So we've got a few of us around here, so hopefully this will spawn soon, or there is some, or it's just finished. No, I think it may be just that a few other people have turned up to grab this one, so that's quite cool. Loads of people on these horses that you can see here. That's because pretty much everyone who's here probably then got the Collector's Edition, which has it. Uh, he's talking about maybe we should do Sunhold first as it's not here yet, but there are a few people here. We could. Uh, okay, let's go and do Sunhold. Uh, playing there with my high half at the moment would be interesting to see how differently I'm treated if I was a different race. Oh, hang on a second. No, it's come up by the sounds of it. We were about to go and do Sunhold, and then, yeah, it's arrived. So we'll just get this uh, geyser out of the way with as well. There's a few more of us here at the start than we did in the last one. There'll probably be a few other people who will turn up as we're going through. So we might have a few more mobs on this one than we did on the last one. I'll just take these out. But yeah, I've got a couple of high elf characters as well. So I'm going to be intrigued. Once I finish playing it with this new wood, this new wood elf character. And this is pretty much a brand new character that I only started yesterday. Um, I will... Um, want to go through one of my more experienced wood uh, high elves and see what happens with it. I've got uh, a high elf templar that I'll probably run through the land here and see what the difference is in the responses when I run through. Okay, let's take this one out. Grab these. A few area effect things. I would really need to stop at some point and just have a check. So once we finish running around and grabbing all these thing areas uh, I was just say we're about to go and do Sunhold, which is the public dungeon in this area. Uh, if any of you want to join us, just chuck us a whisper in game. Uh, we're on the PCEU server, obviously. Uh, well, maybe not so obviously, but uh, a number of you here in the chat are also in the same guild as us, so uh, you'll be well aware. But um, if you want to come and join us for Sunhold and do the public dungeon with us, uh, you're more than welcome to join us. Um, I can't see Vodadan having a problem with it, and I certainly haven't got a problem with it. 
take all this out. Loads of stuff dropping in here. It's loads of nice new materia. Uh, materials. Materia? Materia is something from Final Fantasy. Actually, Final Fantasy 8, wasn't it? Or Final Fantasy... No, Final... Yeah, I think it was 8. Add materia in. No, materials. Let's take these out. And he goes down as well. Come on. They are simple enough. Uh, these guys are... It is just literally a matter, and especially at the moment, with so many people running around. Yeah, you see how quickly everything's dying there at the moment, it's quite cool. I'm wondering, I've not seen anything but named bosses when doing these geysers, so I'm wondering if everything is a named boss from the geysers. And I imagine there'll probably be an achievement for taking out each of the different named bosses as well when they turn up. There we go. That's cool. Uh, Never jewelry thing there. Worms. Somerset will be ours. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, it won't. Right. Okay. Let's take this shell. <laughs> Let's kind of look. See what we got. Uh, fishing row. We got another ring as well. That's cool. The more rings we can get, the better. I think we got it. Uh, yes. Is a uh, Waller down saying, yeah, he's got so much jewelry already. So, like, which is good. We need a lot more jewelry drops if we are to actually get our skills leveled up. As I say, Inklings did show. Um, uh, well, Doctor Cool wants to join us, uh, so let me just invite. Uh, let Voladan know because he's leader. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm leader. So let's uh, invite Voladan then. As uh, invite Doctor Voladan, uh, invite Doctor Cool down. Uh, I'll just let Voladan know. Uh, Doctor Cool is joining us as well. If that's okay. And we'll have three of us run around as well. I'm going to take this out. So, of course, uh, have a look at this. And if anyone else wants to join us, just drop us a quick message. Um, because we are literally right by the way shrine to go into Sunhold now. So, uh, would be awesome to run around together with the three of us there, having a look at it there. Uh, it's the public dungeon that's in the south of um, Somerset. I'm going to have a quick exploration, find what's in there. I think there's some sort of collectible or something, isn't there, that drops from here, very much in the same way the Morrowind Public Dungeons did as well. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, and Volodan's already charging off to Sunhold, so let's go follow after him. And look at this. It's back of more of that lovely high elf architecture in the distance there, which is awesome. Uh, ah, yeah, there we are. Dr. Cool's coming up behind us. He's nearly here. Just make sure he's there. He is. Cool. Excellent. Bouncing along <laughs> with his thing there. I haven't been in here yet, so I have no idea what to expect once I get in here. The southern city of Sunhold serves as home port of the Somerset's famed Dominion Navy. But with the high oven fleets over the horizon fighting the Alliance War, Sunhold remains virtually unprotected. That's cool. Right, so let's find out what's going on then. Why are we here? Okay, so. We're all here. Follow down saying yes, yeah, so yeah, he remembers this one. It is actually quite long, but at least we won't get lost running around here because he knows his way around here. That's good news. And the bosses are quite easy to find. Uh, I will say, can we hit all bosses if possible, please? I do like to complete the whole dungeon properly so we can try and actually hit all the sub bosses because with public dungeons, there are multiple bosses. My city has been overrun by the Marner, and Admiral Viscon declares that only my death will stop this attack. He hates my family and demands my head. I know surrender will not save my people. For centuries, Sunhold has been the first line of defense against Marner raiders. Many of their soldiers have fallen by my family's command. And now, with our feet gone and soldiers depleted... Uh, that's a shame, Kitten. Um, if you need to run it at a later point, I'm more than happy to come back and help you. Destroy the Marmer supplies gathered along the shore. Rescue any citizen you find captured, and free Sunwell, a griffin from capture. She's not only the city's symbol, she's also the best weapon we have at our disposal. Will you 
Fabid and I shall head to the merchant's district. I need to investigate the area and see whether Malmö may be holding Sunhold Noble's prisoner. Meet me there when you've completed your tasks and we'll assess the situation. Griffins have always been our city symbol. Majestic, strong, fierce. Sunhold is often the first line of defense against invaders and we need a griffin's strength. Sunwell just happens to embody that spirit as her ancestors did before her. So they have a pet griffin. Nice. Not so much of a pet as a representation of the city's spirit. The ruling family has always kept a tame bloodline of the creatures. Well, tame as a griffin can be. I was practically raised alongside Sunwell. She's like a member of my family. Griffins are fiercely territorial. As soon as she's freed, Sunwell will hunt down those she perceives as invaders. And as a symbol of Sunhold, she'll also inspire my citizens to keep fighting. What Sunhold needs is hope, now more than ever. An invasion isn't too unusual for Sunhold, given the city's location. It's why we hold one of the best naval fleets in Somerset. However, most of our ships have been sent to help the war effort. And now it seems our worst fears have come to life. Yes, though it pains me to admit it. My city burns and my people are in chains. If only we could turn the tide, we might have a fighting chance to resist this invasion, at least until reinforcements can arrive. Admiral Viscan's cunning as a leader is the reason this invasion has been so successful. His death could turn the tide of battle, but he's far too protected to strike against. It is he who calls for my blood as kin lady of Sunhold. As kin lady, I am the ruler of Sunhold. My death would leave my citizens without a leader to guide them. Even so, I would quickly give my life if I thought it would save my city. Only a fool trusts a sea snake. My death is only to sate the Maomer's hatred of those who have triumphed against them, a victory against Somerset. But as kin lady, I also cannot hide while my city suffers. We must fight back. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, I think we're going to pop over here just grab a quick screenshot because this place is absolutely gorgeous over here. I need to find out a way to remove those bars when I go into screenshot UA drop down mode. But um, yeah, it's a lovely city. Uh, it's, as well as taking a screenshot of all of us, let's have a quick screenshot of the city itself because that is a beautiful vista. Uh, grab another one there as well. There we are. We've got a few screenshots. That's awesome. Okay, uh, we've all got our hands on our hips for some reason as well. All look, all looking not very impressed with what's going on with this invasion. So okay, uh, I'm ready when people are. Uh, I'm ready. Okay. Well, apparently you can mount up in here. So okay, let's take out these people. I don't know why we were jumping down here. I guess we have to go this way. Or maybe I just jumped too soon. Well, you jumped first, didn't I? So, oops. Okay. No, but apparently we are going this way. Cool. Uh, let's take these guys out. There we are. Nothing that's actually too heavily difficult. I'm sure, just like the other public dungeons, uh, uh, it's like I was saying, yeah, I have to deactivate it. I'm guessing it's in the menu options. I'll have a look at that later, see if I can do that, because I would like to get a lot of screenshots, and I mean a lot of screenshots out of Somerset, because it is such a beautiful place to run around. I'll just take out these. All right. So any of the UI we can remove while taking out the screenshots. Perfect. Aha. Uh -huh. Taking out the supplies there. So we, I didn't actually pick up what our full objective was there. So we've got to destroy six supplies and rescue a bunch of citizens as well at the moment. Okay, so let's see what happens. There's some reef vipers here as well. Fairly easy when you've got a group of three of you. As I said, I think you I mean a bit like the Morrowind dungeons and everything else. This should be soluble. Um, Dr. Call all right? He seems to have stopped. Uh, okay. Uh, we seem to have lost one of the players. He seems to have dropped behind us a minute, a second. So I'll just drop him a quick message in group. Oh no, he's caught up. That's cool. Excellent. With his little jester's crown. 
And up we go, up here, past this boat, and ah, uh, oh, nice swarm of people. But again, a nice bit of AOE, and yeah, it's all going to go down quick enough. No problems. Loads of gold as well. There we are, take out these. Uh, it's quite handy, the fact that actually we're walking around with a few people who are quite high in CP level at the moment. So even though I'm a fairly brand new character, I'm even I'm not even barely getting a shot in here at the moment. Ah, heavy sack. Who wants it? Anyone want the heavy sack? Yeah, you have it, Dr. Cool. Come on, mate. If you want it. Uh, it's okay, I'm fine. Someone just grab it. That's alright. Cool, excellent. We'll take out the next one. Actually, you know, he does die very quickly. These things here. So run around here. Also helps the fact that even though I, my character here is only level 11, I do have 720, uh, 750 points, champion points. So my character does have some advantage over people who are at the same level as me. Uh, just because I already have several very... Oh my God, 11 maxed out characters at the moment. <laughs> but being able to play another character, my 15th one, is awesome. I have four characters, that's right. Four characters left to be reaching their maximum level but uh, 11 that are already there but this is a brand new one that I started yesterday with the warden it's also my third warden character so I now have three characters from each of the uh, individual classes which is quite cool oh did I lose my bear okay right bring it back still not got a name for the bear yet though so if anyone's got any suggestions on what I should call this bear, let us know. Okay, jump over here. Up, oh, there's one of supplies. Let's burn that. So we got four. Uh, just go grab over here as well. And there's another level as well. Look at that, up to level 12 already. Yesterday I felt like, because I was sitting there taking the quest slowly and everything else, I felt like my quests were crawling. Today, obviously we're in groups of people. I've put on armor that is training armor, so it also boosts my experience as well. Do seem to be getting somewhere with it as well. Uh, just while they carry on two seconds, let's just quickly claim that. Pop that in there. That's cool, drop back out again. Uh, where are they shot off to? Down here, okay. Oh, we have a boss. Shipbreaker. What is it? I can't see it. All I can see is lots of poison. Oh, it's a big tortoise thing. He didn't last very long, but... <laughs> that was a boss, apparently. Uh, but yeah, he's dead. That's cool. Uh, head back here. So I'm guessing that's the first boss we've actually taken out. Unless we've taken one out without me realising it. Uh... Let's carry on down a second. Around here. Take these guys out as well. Actually, I'm not sure where I'm going. I should be following the others, not trying to lead the way. I'm so used to running around with my tank and being the one that has to run out the front or try and run out the front. Uh, boat there. I don't think that's where we're supposed to be going, but jump over this way. There we are. That's cool. Light the docks. It does look nice. Look at all these ships put in there. I am going to have to get myself one of these seaside houses and build my own little arm, uh, naval docks, I think. I've already got a small little jetty out the back of my Daggerfort Covenant 1 uh, house as well, which is pretty cool. I need to do the fishing achievement, which, yeah, as you all know, doing the fishing achievement... Oh, that's a heavy sack. I'll grab this one. There we are. Cool. Oh, pewter! Excellent! Even better! So there's a heavy sack full of pewter. That's the material that's needed for jewellery crafting. Let's burn these supplies. There we are. So we've done all our supplies. Now we're just going to go and get the bosses and rescue the citizens. So I guess we're going to the city proper itself to do that bit. Take out these guys. There we are. All dead. Cool. And these ones over here. Cool. Uh, thinks that we should be possibly going the other way. Okay. Well, I'm following you guys, so whichever route you want to take. He thinks that we should be going. Yep, yeah, whichever way. There we are, cool. Let's take out these. Cool. 
Yeah, it's like a house. Fishing is, unfortunately. I, I mean, I want some of the achievements from it. I just find the drop rate is so low. It's just that I start doing it, and then about a minute or two, you know, after about an hour of doing it or so, I'm like, oh, come on, please. And finding a group who wants to go fishing with you is such a nightmare sometimes as well. Um, but that said, we have the new motifs. Oh, where have they gone? Oh, they're around the corner here. We have the new motif drops in Somerset, which may, may mean more people will be going out fishing, which may make fishing a bit more interesting and a bit more um, worthwhile doing as well, which is uh, great as well, because hopefully there'll be um, those mo drops from the fishing. I'm sure those motifs will fetch a fortune in the guild stores because they come from fishing. So those who do enjoy fishing are going to be are in for a treat with Somerset with those because I think that's going to make them a fortune. Uh, you sold a stack of pewter for 200 each. Nice. I imagine the prices are quite high at the moment on pewter because it's brand new into the game. Of course pewter drops anywhere. Um, all the later materials as well uh, for uh, jewellery crafting. But obviously it hasn't been in the game for as long as all the other materials. It's brand new. People are all having to try and level up their jewellery crafting at the moment. So prices in the guild stores are going to be through the roof at the moment, I would imagine. Oh, the price right now is actually about 500 Oh, that's a shame. You sold it just that little too soon. So that's 500 per actual pewter. That's just insane compared to other material costs at the moment. I don't think I will be buying jewellery material for a while yet until the prices have come down a little bit and there's been a chance for people to have farmed and gained a lot more pewter. Uh, oh, here's another boss here. What a big one of these uh, sea serpent type things. Kalonda the Demon, who wasn't that much of a demon. He died quite quickly. Uh, heavy sack here. I will grab this one quickly. That's maple this time. Uh, oh, we are freeing citizens as we're going along as well, so that's alright. Cool. So we are progressing towards the quest chain. Grab that stuff, and over here we'll take these out. That's those done as well. Conduit. Uh, where are we? Over here. Are we driving down this way or that way? Well, we've got one of us fighting over here. We're splitting up. Don't split up. Splitting up is always a bad idea. Ah, it's a boss. That's why. Cool. Excellent. There's a boss down here. I see Dr. Gaul's joined us. Excellent. So we are there. And yet again. There he is. He's straight out and dead again. Oh, I feel a bit sorry because there are people here who... Let's unfree those. Take them out. There we are. Cool. Let's carry on. Let's go on up. So we have freed now five of the seven citizens. Now we hit more. We've got some more citizens to try and find. This area seems to have already been cleared out slightly. I mean, this dungeon is actually quite huge, but it's really nice. It's quite cool. It's just basically running around fighting in another version of Alanor. But with a great big dockyard as well. It's quite cool. I like this. Uh, who's we missing? Someone? Oh no, it's me. We're missing. <laughs> I'm not caught up with the group there. Right, let's go and catch up. Uh, heading on up, up the steps. Come on. Do, 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 do. Need to move faster. Yes, I should use my sprint. That will actually help. Of course, Draken. Right. Okay, around the corner here. And Stone Archnock. Oh, right. Okay. Fine. Patronarchs that are shaped differently. Okay. That's cool. So they've actually, after introducing it really with the mounts, the idea that Atronarchs could be reshaped into different forms, they have basically actually added them as creatures as well. What's the bet that these stone Atronarch mounts will be put, well, stone Atronarch creatures will be put in as mounts at some point in the future game? I reckon it will be. Right, okay, so. Cool. Let's deal with these. Coming to a crown store near you. Or well, probably a crown crate, actually. I mean, they've already done some in that way, like the lightning ones and the flame ones. So, yeah, I think you'll find stone will not be far behind. But looking at these. 
Okay, around the corner here. Oh, I can't read those bookcases for some reason. Let's carry on around the corner here. And uh, where are we going? Okay, uh, no, we're going back. Just into here. Nope, not actually sure we're going. Not that way, we're going the wrong way. Oh no, let's take this out anyway. Ah, he's going that way, cool. Now I see where he's going. I couldn't see where he was for a second. Uh, that one out. He says, darn, Griffin. Well, we got free sun well. That's our current quest. Though he is quite a distance away. Ah, there we are. Activated the bears. Got them sorted. Uh, he's just literally dragging everyone in. This is doing good for my Fighter's Guild rep, though. I'm noticing my Fighter's Guild rep is going up quite nicely in the corner there. As this is a brand new character going through, that means I don't have the normal dolmens to hit the Fighter Guilds. But this place, you are actually gaining Fighter Guilds rep. from. Maybe it's just from doing the Atronarchs. I'll have to have a proper pay a proper attention to that in a second. Uh, we have loads of citizens here, though we've actually freed all the ones that we need to. Just take out these here. Oh no, maybe this other oh, boss is it, or is it the group boss? Ah, this may be the group event because it's sending down so many at the same time. Take these out. Uh, so those who are just joining us, this is Sunhold we're running around at the moment, which is the public dungeon in Somerset. There we go. Connor Jill, the Leviathan. Is it, was it? Yes, the Leviathan. Where's he gone? There it is. Likes to jump up and down. Oh no, we lost one of our party. Who's dead? Uh, Dr. Cool's character's dead. But he's back up. It's okay. Yes, that was the group event. So, cool. Excellent. He went down fairly quickly. Let's wait for him to return. There we are. Cool. Uh, Wonder if I got any good consumables from that. No, I haven't yet. So, okay. From what I heard, there was something that is a collectible. Uh, the drops from the public dungeon, to say, like Morrowind. I have to look it back up again to remind myself what it is, or, or if it is indeed, or if I'm actually just misremembering something I read somewhere. But if it does, I haven't had it drop yet. But then again, if we remember from Morrowind, it took ages for anything in the public dungeon to drop like you needed it to. Okay. Take these out. Cool. Excellent. Let's carry on back up. And yeah, that sounds like another boss. The Pyridon something. Wind. Pyridean wind. There we are. Was the Pyridean wind. Died pretty quickly. Yeah, with the group we got here, the three of us, things seem to be dying quite nice, quite quickly. Might not have the same results if we were coming in here on our own, obviously. But, uh, yeah. Let me just run through. Ah, Skyshire. Excellent. I can nearly completely miss that one. Oops. Volodan saying, saying you can't wait to see the achievement furniture. Yeah, it, the, it, as I showed at the beginning of the stream, the achievement furniture is absolutely lush as hell. To use a very Welsh word, it's lush that is. But yeah, the furnishing items is very, very lush. Very cool stuff. Okay, taking that out. Where are we going? Oh, apparently we're jumping over the edge here. Okay. Ah, oh, there's the griffin. Right, okay. Hoping that wasn't meant to be a boss or something. I'm guessing we're destroying these chains. Yay, there's the griffin. And there goes the griffin. Okay. Are well, you supposed to come and help us? <laughs> He's running away already. Okay. Take these out. And I am now level 13. So I have gained several levels while I've been in here, actually. Let's uh, quickly level that up. Second, grab that and add to my stamina. 
Cool. Right, there we are. And there's something to loot there. And they're already well ahead of us, killing everything already. I'm sure by the time I catch them, I'll find a load of dead bodies. Oh, no, that's right. It's cool. Uh, up here we come. Back across here. So I think, is that all the bosses that we've just taken out? Have we actually achieved everything? We've just got to go and hand the quest in, is it? Oh, meet with the kin lady. Okay, so we might have to go and take on the final boss. Or the quest boss, rather than the actual group event boss. Apparently she's down this way. And this way. And over the side there. Awesome. Ah, uh, great. Okay. That's all dead. Where, where are we going? Uh, this way. Right, okay. Stop to go with us. No, he's still being attacked. Let's take out some of these. All dead. Excellent. Let's see how my things holding up. Yeah, still got plenty of space in my bags. So that's alright. I'm running dungeons like this. I mean, there's plenty of drops. The things seem to be quite lootable quite often in Sunhold. So there's loads of drops. Aha! Admiral Viscan. No, it's not. And if it's yours, then it means we've got to kill you to get it. So let's do that. Yeah, I got him. Right, okay, there's the kin lady. Let's find out what she says. Thank the stars you arrived. I thought my life forfeit. This car was ranting before you came. Burned supplies, released prisoners, a griffin now roaming the skies, picking off sea elves like the rats they are. Tell me, was that your doing? With Admiral Viscon dead, now is the time to strike. I shall rally my people and call Sunnerwell to my side. We'll form a resistance the likes of which these sea snakes have never known. Thank you for making this all possible. Oh, Griffin Feather Talisman. Is that a new memento, is it? Uh, yeah, new memento. Cool. Excellent. And a pair of shoulders. Okay, cool. With Malmer down and Admiral Viscon defeated, I'm sure my citizens will join together and fight. All we have to do is keep... What is the name of this dungeon? It's Sunwell. Uh, it's the city towards the south, Zucker. Um, there's like a big naval city in the south of Somerset. Uh, obviously, the High Elf's navy is out with the uh, fighting the Free Banners War with the Queen. Uh, but the city itself, then, with the navy out, has been taken over by the Maramar, the Sea Elves. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sunhold, yes. Sorry, not Sunwell. Sunwell is in World of Warcraft, so yeah, ignore that. Sunhold. <laughs> it's a Sunhold dungeon. Uh, right. Carry on a second. I'm glad he's all right. To think. Not so long ago, I argued against opening Somerset's borders, and yet, without the help of newcomers, Sunhold would never have survived. I'll forever be grateful for the deeds you've done today. Good. Excellent. So we've managed to change one racist mind by the looks of it. Uh, there is a new memento that just came out. Let's have a quick look, see what that is. Let's run down the griffin feather. Uh, it's just a bunch of feathers that go up in the air. Okay, cool. It's a small memento, but, you know, something new again. Excellent. Right, where do we go to get out of here? Uh, we have three geysers, uh, four world bosses, and one public, another public dungeon left. Okay, so let's go and do that. Uh, he's going to teleport straight to Shimmering, so what I'll do is I will teleport to Volodan directly. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, oh, he hasn't gone yet. Hang on. Actually, jump. He's in Sunhold still. Okay, thanks, Dr. Cool. That was awesome, running around there. That was cool. Obviously, when we go and do the other public dungeon, um, people are more than welcome to join us for that one as well. There are two public dungeons in uh, Somerset, just as there was in Morrowind Chapter as well. I was hoping that he would have teleported out there by now and gone to Shimmerine. But he hasn't as yet. Where did he teleport to? Yes. Travel to play. Hopefully, uh, he's not in a suitable location. He's still mid teleport. I'll tell you what, in that case, let's use the 75 gold. Let's just go. Rather than holding around and waiting around for a moment, we'll just crack on still.
no problem, Zucker like House. Though I did get the name wrong first. <laughs> I used a name that was from a different game altogether. But yeah, it starts with Sun. <laughs> but yeah, Sunhold, Dr. Cool's got it right. Sunhold is the name of the dungeon. Just top up my liquid a second. Trying a different liquid at the moment. This is a fizzy strawberry liquid in my vape today, rather than the normal strawberry ice cream I go for. Just because I was popped out to a different town this morning, we were looking for new material for me and Kitten's um, wedding outfits uh, for when we get married in September. Uh, we're having an ESO stroke Skyrim themed wedding of all things. So we're setting ourselves up with wedding costumes that are very much inspired by some of the clockwork city armor. It's uh, looking cool having a talk with the uh, tailors this morning to get that sorted. Uh, but we went to uh, over to Murpha Tidville this morning, which is a rather strange town in the middle of the city. Oh, right. Okay. My Voladan seems to have gone offline. He must have been disconnected for a second. Uh, while he's doing that, in that case, that gives me a chance to actually just spend some of my skill points because I've gained a load of skill points that I haven't been spending for a while. And it would be a good idea to maybe upgrade some of these. The Scorch we could probably morph. Uh, converts to a stamina ability and deals poison damage. Well, I'm putting everything into stamina, so let's make it a stamina based thing, even though it's ill advised. Um, We'll do bond with nature. One of your animal companions is killed or unsummoned. You restore 630 health. That'll do. And again, I've probably got some racial to spend actually as well. Yeah, resistance is to be increased as a wood elf. Armor, I haven't put anything into, so I should really put something into there. Uh, definitely on stamina recovery, on weapon critical. Yes, definitely should have that. Proof sneaks, not so important at this stage, so I'll just leave that off for a second. Um, let's get some. Let's increase the damage on my bow and the weapon critical on that one as well. Uh, animal companion, savage beast, activating an animal companion ability gains two ultimate. Okay, so that might be handy. Uh, no, not really actually. That was a bit of a waste actually because it's a bear, so it's always out. Um, uh, Zakas is saying he has to restart his PC at the moment. Uh, okay, so he's excited for the votes. Votes. Uh, yes, uh, Volodan saying, yeah, he got disconnected, but we'll be heading north next. So, let's have a quick look. Where are we? Uh, so, we're up here somewhere. So, I'll just head a little bit further north. And we're going to be going to be hitting the rest of the geysers, the well boss, and the public dungeon. Which is pretty cool. We'll get all these done, get these achievements on this character. Actually, how is my thing here while we're waiting for him to come back? reconnect his PC uh, yes okay so it's gonna have a word with the banker let's drop a load of stuff in here I like the fact that jewelry's been put into its own tab as well that is helpful that's just a few pieces of jewelry there that's great that'd be great for disenchanting uh, dissembling later on uh, drop all this into my bank as well um, oh I've just had a crash message come up Great. Okay, so I am having to restart as well a second let's bring up uh, while we're doing that I will be back soon. <laughs> Message a second. Um, is that one? No, it's not that one. So, uh, right. Okay, so we will be back soon. Give me two moments. I am going to restart my client a second. We've just had a crash uh, myself as well. That's the first crash I've had since the patch has come down. To be fair, crashes are to be expected in the first week after a patch. I mean, the game client would sometimes crash anyway. It's the same with every single MO that ever exists because there is so much code that is involved in it. But the week of the patch, obviously you can do as much play testing as you like, but until you send it live, you will not know how it will exactly work with a load of people in there. And as soon as you put it out live where you really put the proper stress test onto the game, you end up with some issues. So we will be packing on still a second. Uh, I'm just re-logging back into the game myself as well, Volodan. Uh, Volodan got kicked out as well. I've just been kicked out as well. Um, but as I say, this is the first time I've been kicked out. I know there was a big disconnect yesterday, just after I came off stream, uh, which affected a number of people as well. So there's about two disconnects I've seen since the game has dropped. I'm happy with that. That's fine. Uh, you know, it's, it, you expect within the first week for there to be problems. I am sure there will be some patches coming out in the coming weeks where it will fix some of the issues that they see coming in, which might cause some of this disconnecting. Um, 
but they will find it out as they go through. I mean, as far as a launch has gone, this has been actually pretty smooth uh, from my perspective, having experienced quite a few different MMOs launching expansions and ex uh, DLCs over time, including ESO. ESO's had some expansions that come out that have had problems as well, uh, but uh, he's stuck. Uh, yeah, so Volodan is stuck in the loading screen. I will be back very very shortly i am just loading in a second in fact actually i can now remove my brb back screen there we are cool so we will be back in very shortly now give us a second uh, and we are back in the game as well so there we are we are back as well uh volvo is not far behind me but i was actually just finishing using my banker then so let's just make sure i just finished dumping some stuff in my bank while uh volvo catches us up uh, no, not withdrawer. I wanted to put it in. There we are. That's cool. Right, excellent. Pop all this in there as well. Have we got anything from here? I've got a recipe that can probably go in. Uh, and a bunch of glyphs as well, just for my crafter to disenchant. There we are. I've got 18 more space. Maybe just bring the merchant up very quickly. I have both the merchant and the banker, so I have these available at any time without having to run back to a city to sell things. Uh, right, so that was a level three one. That's a level seven one. So don't really need those. Uh, get rid of those. That, that, and that, and that. Uh, cool. And then dismiss her. And then we need to just quickly do my quick slots because I haven't got anything in my quick slots either. So let's get a potion in there. There we are. I am ready. So let's just let Walla down there. That ready. Cool. And away we can go. Uh, yes, yeah, House. I was just very much saying this morning uh, that um, we were going off um, to talk to the tailors or the seamstress uh, over in Murphy Tidfill uh, to get our outfits done. Um, just a uh, public dungeon. And guys, sorry, he was asking if I wanted to do delves too. I am doing the delves as I'm going around anyway, so that's not a problem. So I can come back to uh, and bosses, uh, please. There we are. Cool. Excellent. Just send that on there. Awesome. Um, but yes, uh, Ducker House was asking about marriage talk. Me and Kitten, as I said, those who aren't aware, are getting married in real life, not just in game or anything else. Like we are getting married in real life in September. Uh, we are getting married in a chapel that is called the Bethesda Chapel of all things. That is actually its genuine name. It's not actually related to the company Bethesda, but it just happens to be the name of the local chapel. Um, but we are having an ESO Skyrim theme wedding anyway as we both play the game quite extensively. Uh, and we are basing our outfits, our uh, well, say costumes, our wedding gear, so uh, Kitten's wedding dress and my wedding suit will be based on Clockwork City designs. So we're having to have quite a bit of conversation with the seamstress to get it done. Uh, right, okay. Zucker House, you're still having problems with uh, the Steam ESO. Uh, saying there's problems with people logging in in Steam. That said, I say myself and Volodan both just got um, disconnected two seconds ago. Uh, so we are now back in the game, but we both did get disconnected. Uh, not at the same time, though. I was disconnected a short while after. It was about 30 seconds, a minute after him. So, But we both did get kicked out. There we are. So Way Shrine there. But as I say, that's the second time I've seen a DC happen, but the first one happened while I actually wasn't online. It was just after I went offline and um, I was watching, uh, I think it was Tier Line stream and uh, she got disconnected and a load of others and the server actually went fully down on that occasion by the sounds of it. Uh, but it was soon enough back up and running again as well. Uh, where are we then? We're up here. Cool. I was got hoping you you're just in time, my friend. I could use your help to free these people from Katora's mind trap. Katora has imprisoned a group of adventurers in mind traps, just as the dark entity did to you. I've established mental links with each member of the group, but I can't maintain the links and also perform the tasks necessary to set them free. Let me attune you to my spell. There, now we're connected through the mental links. Find the three adventurers, Kynar, Grog, and Maria. When you get close, the spell should send you into their individual mind traps. I can direct you from there. That's right, yes, uh, Father Dennis, the lady from the... Uh, not from the tutorial, is it? Which, I don't know, who do you meet at the end of the tutorial? Isn't this the lady who you meet in Artium? Uh, Art Art I can't say it now. Artanium? Artium? The, the other land. Uh, but yes, uh, you get sent to speak to her a couple of times. Kynar should be our first priority. Though don't tell him I said that. We approach Magecraft differently, but he's an accomplished practitioner of the art. 
He can assist us in rescuing the others. So find him and free him first. Deeper inside the ruins. Just watch out for the Yagra creatures. I've never seen them before, but they appear to come from the sea. Also, if you encounter any of the mind-trapped High Elves, there's nothing we can do for them. They're too far gone. Kynar and the others will appear to be in a deep sleep. When you get close enough, the spell I'm maintaining should transport you into their individual mind traps. Be careful in there. Thoughts and memories become real inside a mindscape. Hard to say. Each one is formed from an individual's personal memories. Plus, you'll notice Katora's dark influence, which will only grow more prominent as the mind trap snaps shut. I should be able to contact you through the link I've established. This kind of magic is insidious. It takes control of the target's mind, as it did with the High Elves. We need to free the adventurers before it takes them, too. Now get to it! The link requires a lot of energy, and I can't hold it forever. Not very much, I'm afraid. I can sense a dark presence, but I can't quite identify who or what this Katora may be. I sense that the entity is ancient, powerful, and evil. Its mind is alien, though, and hard for me to focus on. I've established a link with the three adventurers. It allows me to slow the progress of the mind trap while providing me with a way to enter the mindscape so you can set them free. This takes a lot of energy, so I'd appreciate it if you hurry. Okay, so that bit done too. That's another quest we've picked up that we can hit on. Uh, right, okay, so where are we? Uh, that's just a normal quest area, so we'll come back to that at a later point when I'm running around on the solo, which I'll probably do a bit later on, unless people want to invite us out to other things as well, which is always possible. Uh, so, right, following Volodan to try and find some more of these geysers, well bosses, and public dungeons that are situated in and around the map. Even have a word for it, loitering. I suggest you learn it. <laughs> okay, yeah, just a little NPC exchange there. I like these little NPC exchanges you get as you go around. It's quite cool. Uh, actually, the ones in here are a little bit more uh, inter oh, well, not interactive, but you hear people bouncing off each other than they do in Morrowind. Whereas Morrowind, when you sort of encounter the random NPCs like that, it's usually just one person. Like there's a mage who was porting around everywhere and like, oh no, this isn't where I should be. And someone else who was like, I've lost my. Um, uh, what you call them, those big tentacly beast things that uh, all the Dark Elves like uh, keeping and farming. Netch, that's it. That's what I was looking for, was the word Netch. Uh, yeah, someone who's lost that there. Alright, let's go. So, yep, that's alright. <laughs> He's running around in circles, because as I say, this character really has no bonuses in speed at all. Can't wait to get her up to 60 like the rest of mine. Um, it's just when you're so used to running around with someone who's got their riding speed all the way up to 60, it feels so slow coming back to these. It's another quest here. Whoa, hey, uh, what are you doing this neck of the woods? Not that you don't have a right to be here, that is. It's just, well, uh, Griffin nesting ground doesn't tend to be the best place for a stroll. Me? Why, I just got a little lost, is all. I would have left already if not for my friends. We were separated, you see, running away from those damn beasts. I'm not much of a fighter, so I'm just hoping they'll make their way out. Really? I have to warn you, the griffins in there are quite nasty. They do anything to protect their nests from invaders. But if you're willing, I'd be mighty grateful. Even pay you for your efforts. If you find my companions, let them know to meet me by the way shrine. Right down the road. Don't worry. I won't run off before you get your reward. We were on our way to Cloudbreast, but must have made a wrong turn. Somehow we ended up within this nesting ground. Of all the luck. As soon as we realized where we were, a whole flight of griffins came rampaging towards us. I barely escaped. The way I see it, they're either dead or hiding. If they're dead, make sure to search their pockets, all right? I'd at least That's nice. something to bring back to the families. <laughs> Loot their bodies, you mean. Okay, no worries. Okay, so where's uh, Volodan gone? Oh, he's just north of us. Okay, let's go and catch up with him. There's another way shrine straight ahead up there. Okay. And 
over to here. Did he just die? <laughs> yep, get the way, Shrey. There we are, cool. That's the note. Yep, okay. Head on this way. Ah, yes, there's another world boss symbol up ahead, so that's what we'll be probably hitting next. Just over the bridge here. Ah, and they're already fighting. There's a big griffin up there in there. Nagravia. A white griffin sat up here. It seems a shame to be fighting the griffins, to be honest. Because they're such adorable creatures. They're like these adorable, n noble creatures that defend Somerset and then us outsiders all come in and end up having to kill them all. So that's the griffin done. So next we need uh, to hit the next geysers or something like that. That's cool. Not worried about the quests at the moment, just uh, wanting to hit the public dungeons and the geysers. So wherever the next geyser is, just waiting on Volodan to, he's got the map that's showing us where we're going. I'm just gonna follow along and tag along behind. As he's got the fastest speed as well, it makes more sense for him to be out paving the way forward. Uh, though we are passing through one of the quest areas, it's not an essential issue. Just come through here. Stuff. Well, that doesn't look like a safely perched stone. I'd hate to be going under there when that finally gives way. And jump over here. Off go okay ah yes there's a geyser up ahead so we'll hit the next geyser so there's six geysers i think in somerset what we hit so far i think one two three geysers so far so down there ah and it's already active and oh it's a bit of a drop bad the tree broke my fall that's good okay well it seems to be active ah fighting off to the side okay now we have additional people here. Cool. Uh, more are up and running. Let's take these out. Drop those down. Drop those down. There we are. Cool. Excellent. Take out some of these. Ouch. Take out these. Awesome. Take that out. This is about the third one of these that we've taken out, taken out today. Oh, sorry, excuse me, a bit of indigestion there as well. Not that I'm sure you guys needed to know that, but still, nonetheless. <laughs> keep ourselves going there, keep in. It doesn't feel like there's an awful lot of variance here other than in the final bosses with these geysers, but uh cool, I was saying that. I haven't seen these before. Spawning out of here, I don't think. Or not in the same sort of level of numbers that they just did there. And get myself kicked over there. Has my bear gone missing again? It has. My bear has decided to disappear. Yeah, there we are. Cool. What have we got now? Ah, uh, what are these lurker type things? Tide rack. I'm gonna have to check the achievements later and see. Let's get some mushrooms up. Yeah, see if there's an achievement for killing each of the name types of bosses. So you might have to be running around these quite often if you want to get all your achievements associated with them. That's cool. Add some more jewelry. Excellent. And there's a shell trove. Excellent. And more necklaces. And powdered mother of pearl. It's an alchemy part. A new alchemy part. Ooh, interesting. They added more alchemy ingredients, I think. But it looks like. Oh no, actually. Well, yeah. 
But I don't think I've seen that one before. Uh, oh, wait, look. Ah, right, okay, there's like a... Oh, that's cool. There's like this little secret cave at the back here. That's awesome. Just behind it, and loads of stuff to loot. That's quite cool. So, soul gem, some coins, and some bags and stuff. That is, uh, if I should point out, this is the little Easter egg that's just tucked behind that geyser. That's quite cool. Never noticed that. Just in there, just a little gap just beside the geyser here that's up in the north side. So if you're ever up in the north side of the geyser and go to the back there, there's that little gap there. So I think Voladan is just going to jump to a way shrine a second. Yeah, he is. To get us in place for the next area. So we'll head to him in a second as soon as he's teleported. Uh, just check the map. Where's he gone? He's that's him gone through, so that should give me time to teleport to him. I like the fact that if you watch someone moving on the map, it actually sees him zoom. Oh, watch not hit my mic. Uh, see him zoom across the map. Rapid speed between when they jump in between the way shrines. That's been in the game since the beginning, but it still looks quite cool. Ah, there we are. Russell this is where we were. Yesterday, so now the quest for the um, the Vinter and the murder that was here. Right. You may be hearing some barking in the background a second there. That's one of our dogs. We have a couple of chihuahuas that uh, recently picked up by the neighbours next door a couple of weeks ago. And they just wind each other up, next door's dogs and our dogs as well. They are constantly out the back guard, yapping as soon as they see one of our cats or our little rescue dog that seems to decide that she likes walking out the cat flap even though she is a little too big for it she still manages to squeeze through the cat flap uh, and every time they're out ours are out in the garden the chihuahuas start barking at them which then gets them barking back and yeah we, they just don't seem to get on too well at the moment uh where are we going to seem to be taking a very roundabout path here as i'm chatting away uh oh i nearly ended up diving down the quarry there that's not a good way to go Let's go this way. Where's he gone? Ah, he's gone to that. Right, I've done this geyser before, but I'm guessing Volodon hasn't done it yet. So let's go and crack this geyser again. I did this one yesterday, I believe. When I was on stream yesterday, it was the first geyser I hit. But uh, cool, we'll go and crack this one anyway, still nonetheless, a second time. It's always extra loot. It's always good. Uh, it's not active at the moment anyway, so there's no particular hurry. Uh, we've got the group rally point active over there, so we'll head on there a second put this into auto run but yes the, 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 so if you heard some barking coming across the mic there because I am using um, one of these uh, dynamic mics that's no, not a dynamic mic it's uh, oh, what do they call them might be a dynamic mic actually it's one of the ones that's got to be powered anyway and they're really ultra sensitive to picking everything up around them um, but yeah just barking away at the neighbors dogs there in the back garden unfortunately uh, but they're, they're fine otherwise. Absolutely lovely dogs. I mean, that one there that you could have heard barking was our Border Collie, though. She was bred from um, show breed dogs. Um, so she's absolutely gorgeous, really pretty dog and everything else. Some of the uh, her lineage have ended up in Crufts, which, uh, for those of you who know anything about the dog breeding world, is like the pinnacle of all events for dog breeding anywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, uh, she's couple of her lineage have I think gone down to Crufts if I remember rightly and it's Kitten's personal dog there uh, yeah that's no problems Kitten that's fine we know it's fine there's no problems if she's uh, barking away in the distance you know it's their home as well as mine and yours <laughs> you know? she's just being protective of the thing and we don't know what it is the chihuahuas say when they start yapping but it really does wind up our two dogs as well so say we got Poppy who is like a show breed uh, lineage dog and then we've also got um, Jasmine, who is our one, which we rescued a few years ago from uh, Cardiff Dog's home as well. She'd been left, she'd been found wandering the streets on her own. She did have a chip in there, but when they took her to the house uh, where the chip was registered to, the house was abandoned. Uh, so, and no one came forward and claimed her. Uh, so we took her on and uh, brought her in. So those are two dogs. So at some point, I mean, if you are on the Discord for Tearline's Discord, which is also where our guild. Uh, is all set up and everything there there's a show your pets thread in there and if you scroll right the way back i have posted pictures of them previously two lovely ladies there we also have a kitten as well or kitten let's say a kitten a cat she's not a kitten anymore she's about three years old we had her a couple of years ago 
who keeps the dogs in line as well. She's a small cat. She's never going to be a very big cat, but she's an absolutely wicked huntress. We live on the back of a Welsh mountain, and literally she is scourge of the wildlife around here. The last several days, we have found several slow worms in the house. <laughs> she keeps bringing in alive, not dead, just brings them in alive. Uh, these uh, slow worms, uh, she keeps bringing them in. Uh, so we keep finding those. She has brought in before mice and birds and everything else. Most of the time they're alive. However, if the rescue one with Jasmine, our rescue dog, finds them, then she's a little less forgiving of these little creatures when uh, our cat Willow brings them in. And we've had a few mornings where we've had a bit of a clean-up job in the morning when we've come in and they've got at it overnight. Not to the point now, actually, we lock the cat in in the house. We lock it all up. We don't let her go out at night because otherwise you just come down in the morning to find plenty of lovely presents from the cat, which is a wonderful thing. She is an absolute wicked huntress. Uh, but still a lovely cat nonetheless, and she keeps the dogs in line. <laughs> all right, hopefully this will spawn soon. There's quite a few of us here, so could do with maybe adjusting their spawn rates on these uh, geysers, I think, because uh, there's been a few times turning up at me. It's taken a while for them to respawn while people are waiting for them to come back. But uh, we'll stick around for a second. A few people here activating their mementos as people do. Running around. It's always nice to have a quick look around, see how people address their characters as you're waiting for the thing to rise. Oh, what is happening to him? Is there some memento? Oh, look at there. Let's see how people do, especially since they added outfitting and the whole dyeing of costumes and stuff. There is so much lovely variation in what everyone wears these days. Everyone has a very different costume. Built up, dyed differently mixed it with different armor pieces. It's absolutely fantastic. Everyone just gets to really individualize your character. It's an absolutely brilliant way of doing it. I think this geyser is not gonna turn up. It's taking its time. Well, we're waiting there. Let's have a look. Flick through at some of our our own mementos there. So of course we've got the clockwork city one. We we'll bring up an image of it. Oh, there's a bit of purple there. That suggests that the geyser's here. Yes, excellent. So the geyser is spawning. There we go. In we go. Just as I turn away to look at the mementos, so it decides it's going to come and spawn up. There's quite a few of us here. I think we'll probably have quite a nice amount of mobs dropping for us to tackle and take on. Take all these out. They're all spawning everywhere. So this will be the fourth guys that we've taken on today. I think there are six, isn't there, in Somerset in total. That one's down. What have we got over here? Uh, there's more over there. Right, okay. Let's take these out. I'm not sure how many waves there actually are of uh, mobs that come through. I've never actually stopped and counted it. Oh, that's another level there. Look at that. That's level 14 just gained. Mid Dolmen. Take out some of these over here. Seem to be gaining levels at quite a nice rate today, so that's quite happy. Circumstances. Hopefully, not doing things like that. That was an interesting blue zone. So, that's one of the Sigic abilities, I think. That's that dead. You guys die as well. Go on, there we are. Cool. Take out that and that. Grab that loot there. More of those. A wave of these stream things. Still having problems with the Steam server, Zucker House. You're saying the damn foolish servers. I always hear more people having more problems playing through Steam than through doing it directly. For, I'm not sure why that might be. I mean, I play it directly. I bought the game direct from, uh, obviously, their website originally. I've been playing since the beginning. Um, so I bought the game just before it came out. Uh, sorry, yeah, bought it on pre-order before it came out and been playing since straight. 
so I don't get it through Steam. I don't have any of the um, problems of having to load up through Steam. I do have Steam, but I'm not so keen on using Steam that often, to be honest. I just, if I'm going to play a game, I might as well just play it direct from the game itself. Uh, Dr. Cool saying he can't log in at the moment. Oh, no. Are you going through Steam as well, or is it... Uh... Oh, we've got uh, Valsvlog Core. I don't think I've seen this one here, so I think they are random name bosses here, not just tied to their individual geysers. Uh, people on ESO Twitter say, yeah, so ESO's Twitter is saying now that they, they are having reports that some people can't connect to the game at the moment. So, as I said, you know, I can imagine it is frustrating if you can't get in. Um, it's frustrating if you get DC'd or if you're playing and you get regular disconnects and stuff like that. At the moment, it is obviously just in the release. I think this is part of the reason why they release it on the PC and the Mac first, or some people say that they do it because um, it gives them a chance just to break it in and test it a little bit. You do need that breaking in time so that they can find where the problems are that might crop up. You can do all the testing in the world. You can literally do as much as you can, but until you put it live and put it for an actual live stress test, then you're not going to have... Um, yeah, you're not going to be able to find all the problems that could cause these sort of things until it actually happens live. So unfortunately, for the first couple of days, there is always going to be issues. And that's not just ESO. That's literally every MMO that has ever existed has that same problem. Uh, I mean, I used to play World of Warcraft years ago. Whenever there was a new expansion or big patch or something like that, patch day was horrendous. Uh, and again, that wouldn't have been Blizzard's fault in that occasion either. That is just the nature of the beast of MMOs. Right, we have a new world boss. Let's go and take this one out. Keel Splitter! Yeah, one of these adder things. And take him out with his wings up. Of course, I mean, me saying all that, it's no consolation at all for those who are currently locked out. And I'm sorry to hear that you are locked out at the moment and can't get in. I hope that they'll sort it out. The fact that ESO has said, uh, the ESO Twitter has said they've seen it means that they do know it's a problem. I would imagine that the uh, the software engineers and developers are probably trying to work out what the problem is, trying to get it solved as we speak. Having worked, I work in IT as my normal day job. Um, I work for, uh, I can't say who I work for directly, but. Uh, Yes, I work in IT, and if we have a massive problem where a bit of software, we, we look after several pieces of software and quite a number of servers and a lot of users, uh, if we have it go down, then we tend to get a lot of screaming phone calls, uh, but I do know that when you're in IT, that as soon as something goes down, you don't want things to be down, you don't want things, people to be screaming at you and saying, I want to have connection to this, or I need to have connection to this, especially in our case, in some cases, people can't do their jobs because they can't get into the software, and they'll sitting around and they can't do anything then they're just sitting around twiddling their thumbs while you're fixing it and of course you don't want them to be twiddling around their thumbs either you're spending all your time then trying to get through it and it can be quite stressful for those people in that scenario but it's not that they're deliberately locking you out or they've deliberately set it up or haven't done enough testing it is just unfortunately that these things do happen but they will try and get it done and up and running as soon as they can because, you know, at the end of the day, these games live on the fact that people can play them. And I remember going back a bit, I was a big SimCity fan. Uh, for those of you who know that game, right from the beginning, from the very classic SimCity. I remember playing that one. That came out on a 486 PC, uh, which is really, really old. Uh, and they recently, in a couple of years, well, about four or five years ago, they released a brand new version of SimCity. A really exciting, all upgraded and everything else with online play and everything, so you can attach up to your neighbouring cities. And literally, they spent months with the game being broken, with no sign of being fixed or recognition that it was broken. And I gave up on the game in the end, on a game that previous renditions I would play to death for years playing this building different cities building new cities and EA games just failed completely to even look at SimCity uh, the latest SimCity when it broke um, or if they did they weren't really giving much feedback to people uh, to say what they were doing to fix it 